I'm Dr. Jeff Bjorklund, a professor of chemistry here at North Central College, and I'm thrilled to tell you about our Science Center project. As faculty shepherd, I'm a liaison between our faculty and the architects and engineers. Together, we're making sure the building will serve our students in every discipline, not only now, but well into the future. This is the most transformative academic investment our campus has made in a century. We haven't seen a change to our academic facilities like this since 1908, when we expanded out of Old Main, building Goldspawn Science Hall and Carnegie Library. Much has changed since then. Our new science facilities will help students of the 21st century and the next understand and appreciate the beauty of science in a liberal arts setting. As we pass Old Main, Carnegie, and Pfeiffer, you can see that this project extends the academic core of the campus down to Jefferson Plaza. And here's the new Science Center along the sesquicentennial walkway. It's an inviting building that incorporates architectural details from around campus. It uses outdoor space as thoughtfully as indoor space. Here's a rain garden on the left, a sustainable solution to rainwater collection that also creates an educational gathering space. Here, students and faculty can illustrate different ecosystems or just enjoy an outdoor education venue. We'll come in through the west side, which faces the interior of campus. There's a lot to see in here with about 125,000 square feet. This building will provide well-designed, casual meeting spaces, spacious classrooms, and ample room for undergraduate research. It'll emphasize collaborative learning and highlight the integrative nature of science. The auditorium over here has flexible seating and tiered levels to support a variety of activities. When we use it as a classroom, we might use one or both tiers. When we host a plenary lecture for a conference, we could use the back seating and accommodate up to 120 people. We designed this room and the entire building with flexibility in mind. Here's one of the spacious classrooms where students will have ample room to work in groups, use their laptop or tablet without crowding into their neighbor's space. They'll have room to learn and discuss concepts central to their education in comfort. This is a grab and go food stop where students and faculty can grab a snack or a sandwich whether they're on their way across campus or dashing upstairs. Now we'll head up to the second floor. Here's a faculty office to the left and a student breakout space. A big part of what we're doing here is trying to encourage frequent casual conversations between students and professors because that's where some really great learning can happen. Turning around, we see a remarkable flexible academic venue which we can divide in all kinds of ways depending upon what we need large meeting rooms, or a space for poster presentations and conferences, such as our own Rawls Symposium. Here's another student breakout space. We have 19 of these scattered throughout the building because we expect the building to become a prime study and student gathering spot. It'll be a magnet for all students, not just science students, because it's closer to the residence halls than the library or boiler house. And how about some science? Here's a biology lab. Notice how the space is designed to allow shared equipment on the outside benches with central areas for wet lab procedures, data analysis, or even group discussions. Our current spaces were not designed for this modern learning environment. Here's a physics lab. Again, this shows how we're teaching science differently now than we did 50 years ago. It's less about talking, more about doing. Physics students can collect and analyze data to discover a scientific concept rather than simply verifying a concept they've already learned. This is an organic chemistry lab. Most of our work here is done in fume hoods. Currently, we cram four students to a hood when really there should just be two students. And even then, we don't have enough space. Here, it will be different. Everyone will have good sight lines thanks to the glass backs of the hoods, and students will do organic chemistry as it's done in the real world. These wide, spacious halls will double as good conversation spaces. Windows into the labs from the halls will give us a chance to put science on display continually, as do the windows that line every outside wall. 
This glass conference room is facing southwest with a beautiful view towards downtown Naperville. As students and others pass on the sesquicentennial walkway and through Jefferson Commons, they'll see a vibrant, active space being used all day and into the evening. Putting science on display has been a college goal for a long time, and this building does that. The new building will meet our needs now and years from now. It'll encourage conversation and learning among all scientific disciplines, among students and faculty from all fields, among the liberal arts and the sciences. It will prepare the college and our students for a brilliant future of science centered on students.